Welcome to Higher Praise. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Everybody just say that. Jesus, I love you. Say it again. Jesus, I love you. Oh, you may be seated in his presence. Thank you so much, sisters. Oh, the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. My, it's so good to see you here tonight in God's house. We are in an exciting time. Amen? Amen. I mean, these are the best days. The best of days. When we stop and look at what God is doing all across the world, it's amazing. It is amazing. There's this, what's going to happen next? And we think of that in the terms of politics, government, economy, cultural, society, education. What's going to happen next? And When you start thinking in those areas, you start feeling down. (laughs) But when you look at it from Scripture and you look at it as the church, we begin to understand God's got it. And it's all under control. Praise God. And the best is yet to come in spite of the things we're facing. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not here to give you doom and gloom tonight. I'm I'm here to give you something here in midweek recharge. In the last several months, we've been talking about being strategic as a person and as a church in the community and being a regional church. And we, we... have grasped that, and I'm so thankful for it. And as pastor challenges us Sunday after Sunday, we're we're experiencing uh, some tremendous things. We are a congregation that is maturing in the depths of God. And I appreciate that. And there's this spirit of expectancy. The vision is cast, and we are experiencing the fulfillment of of those things of the last 20-some years, and we're thankful for God's faithfulness. You know, I talk to a lot of pastors and leaders, and not everyone is on the same page. Now, I'm not going to get, but I'm glad that I'm on the right page. (laughs) That's all I'm going to say. I'm glad I'm on the right page. And I'm not saying that with pride or being egotistical. I know that I know that I know that I know. Amen. God is good. And he's good all the time. He's good right now. Praise God. And all of heaven. And all the resources of heaven are for we. So why should we worry? Why should we fret? Amen? Thankful for the peace of God. I don't have to tell you I have peace. One fellow told me the other day, he said, he said, when you get in the pulpit and you start grinning, 
something's going to happen. <laughs> he he, re, he rem, remembers me when I was in school at Fayette Central. We went to school together. And uh, I didn't, he attends here. A few months ago, he come up to me and he said, are you Phil Russell? I said, yes. He said, are you the one that attended Fayette Central? I said, yes. Who are you? And he said, don't you remember me? I said, no, I don't. He said, well, we were in gym class. And he said, you run up behind me and pulled my trunks down. <laughs> and said, said, you were all the time doing ornery things like that. He said, you were never mean, but you were just. <laughs> I said, Richard. And, and I said, Richard. I said, well, well, well. <laughs> you know, your past will always haunt you, even when you're saved. Praise God. But isn't it good that we can have precious memories, great memories, amen, and even when we were in our school days, as young Christians, we had a lot of fun, lots of laughs, amen, and we look back over the last many years and we find ourselves experiencing the faithfulness of God and being faithful. Amen. I want to share with you tonight going in a new direction tonight. But I want to pose this question to you tonight. Have you heard the voice that roars? Have you heard the voice that roars? What if the manifestation of Jesus himself to John on the Isle of Patmos, that was quite of an experience there in the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Think about that extraordinary day and what happened on that day. Standing in the supremacy of Christ himself, And we, having read all of the accounts of John the Revelator, I want you to place yourself in John's place just for a moment. How would you have handled that? How would you have handled that? Just go back to that scene there on the Isle of Pas Patmos and look at the imagery of that, the reality of that. And John comes up with a startling word picture of Jesus. He was dressed in a long robe with a gold grip of cloth around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a blazing fire, his feet like bronze metal glowing in a furnace. His voice sounded like rushing waters. His face was like the sun shining in all of its bright. How would you deal with that experience? How would I deal with that experience? If we had seen Jesus like that, what facet of his attributes would have struck you first or maybe struck you down?
John says here that his voice sounded like the rushing waters. I want you to think about that. Have you heard the voice that roars? So oftentimes, when we think of the voice of Jesus, we think of that kind, gentle voice. But what if you had seen Jesus' face like the blazing sun? What if we saw him and his eyes were like fire? What about his voice? Think about his voice as John describes it here. His voice sounded like rushing water. The NLT says, thundering like mighty ocean waves. I want you to think about this. One translation says, it resounded like a roaring waterfall. Have you ever heard a roaring waterfall? Maybe you've been to Niagara. It's a roaring waterfall. John says Jesus' voice resembles a roaring. Could I insert this here tonight? I believe that what is happening in this earth right now is caused by Jesus' voice roaring. There is something deep, magnificent, marvelous, supernatural. But God has heard the prayers of the intercessors around the world. God is hearing the prayers from the people that are praying in the midst of the greatest prayer movement that this world has ever known. And we have friends, we have people within the body of Christ that are attempting to diminish the move of God by proclaiming with a spirit of fear the negative things in the world. They are attempting to promote them more than thus saith the word of God. I'm not going to be quiet and I don't think you should be quiet because our Lord and Savior Jesus is roaring with his voice and he's breaking everything that it touches. It's a sound of many waters. It's a roaring of a mighty waterfall. Are we talking about the Lamb of God that often is characterized in children's Sunday school classes as meek and mild? Yes, we are. But this is another dimension of His voice. It's powerful. Are we referring to the Man that dwelt in quiet obscurity, incognito for the first 30 years. Are we talking about him? Yes, we are. Is this the same Jesus that humbled himself so fully he refused to debate his detractors? Let me insert something here. At this juncture in my life, debate doesn't mean anything to me anymore. You don't gain anything. 
Oh, you might win something. But I want to say something. Being Christ-like, being one who has heard His voice, and then just being what He has said for us to be, causes every debate to be one prior by our being and doing. Praise God. I just sense God in a special way tonight that we're not walking in a disoriented fashion. We know in whom we have believed. Hallelujah. And we know that there is nothing, absolute nothing, that can take us out of the hand of God. We are there. We are secured. Hallelujah. And we shall not be moved. Well, I'm about to shout. Praise God. We need the positiveness of God the Father, Jesus Christ, His Son, and He, the Holy Ghost. We need this Trinity in us. We need to be like the prophet. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. And we're not going to be a fire that goes out. Well, glory. Does John mean to suggest to us today that this previously temperate teacher possesses a voice that thunders? A voice. He's not hesitant to project. Here's what I'm sensing in my spirit the last few days. All of these things that are going on is caused by the projection of Christ's voice in this season. It's like thunder. I believe that God just decided to take action. A football player dies and America prays. Jesus' revolution movie comes out, adds another layer. Amen. And everybody's worried because China and Russia met the last couple of days. They've created some alliances. Some banks are failing. They ought to have failed. They were mismanaged. And we get all disoriented. And we, we say, the rapture's getting ready to take place. We're in the last of the last days. Okay. Matthew 24 and 14, the most up-to-date word in the Bible right now, Jesus said, what did he say? He said, when the gospel is preached into all the world, then the end will come. (laughs) Glory to God. When's the end going to come? When the gospel is preached into all the world. Glory to God. Quit worrying about that he may come today. He may. But I want to tell you, there's still three billion that haven't heard the gospel. And the voice of the Lord is thundering, go, go, go in this hour. 
This is our responsibility tonight. Amen. It appears that this thunderous voice of Jesus is it something like the roar of a lion? Perhaps it is. Jesus does portray himself as a lion in Revelation 5. So, but in this case, the image is even more sensational than that. Here his voice is like a waterfall. Thunderous, roaring. Think about it. Are you hearing the voice of Christ tonight? Is there something going on in your life, in your business, in your profession, in your family, in our community, in our state, in our nation, in this earth in which we live? What is really being heard by the church. Man called me the other day, a minister, and he was, he said, I had a dream last night. And he said, I don't dream a lot, but he said, there was this big event happening. And he said, I looked around. There was all kinds of people there. And he said, I looked and I saw you standing off at the side. And he said, uh, I felt overwhelmed. I felt I was in trouble. And he said, I walked over to you and he said, Pastor, can you help me? And he said, you said to me, no, it's your turn. He said, it's your turn to step into it. It's our turn to step into what God is doing. It's our turn. God's positioned this. He's prepared us for this. When pastor a week ago called for a week of fasting and prayer, and many have participated, and I understand Many are continuing in some form. The continuation is caused by the roar. The self-discipline is caused by what we're hearing. It, it, it's, it's a voice that cannot be shut. We can't close it off because it's a roaring voice. It is the voice of the Lord. And we, we might say, now, now pastor, I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to go. I don't want to be. Listen. Listen. In Hebrews chapter 1, the sun is the radiance of God's glory, sustaining all things by his powerful word. At the right hand of the majesty in heaven, we must understand the power that's behind this voice. And the voice is power because it is Christ. And I feel that I must challenge you tonight as strategic people to listen to your master's voice. Listen to your master's voice. 
Now, let me give you an example here of the master's voice. This roaring voice. This, listen, this is the voice that brought Lazarus out of the tomb. Suddenly, as torrential rivers, death was swept aside and Jesus' voice said, Lazarus, come forth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The voice of the master. John chapter 11. This is the voice that one day will summon all the dead of the ages to stand accountable before him at the final tribunal in Revelation chapter 20. And this is what he said. A time is coming and now has come when the dead will hear and the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm going to live. Amen. We're going to live forever. Do you believe that tonight? Praise God. Aren't you glad that death, well, let me say it this way. way. Death has come to death. Death has no sting. Praise God. Jesus conquered it. We as believers are prepared for the transition. Praise God. Hallelujah. You say, well, I, I, Pastor, I don't want to die today. No, we don't want you to die today either. But as a believer, we're ready. It's but a transition. It's but a door that we walk through. Praise God. But if we go by the way of the grave, there's going to be a great resurrection morning when all the dead in Christ shall rise. Oh, what a day that's going to be. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll tell you what, there'll be revival out at Dale Cemetery that morning. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. I mean, out there where our family's yeah. plots are and all the church members throughout this city and where all of my family is in those rows out there and where Sister Russell and I, if we go by the way of grave, where we're going to... That's the only clear title I have to any property right now are those two plots. But, uh, but uh, you know, those are, the, the, that's where we're going to go one of these days if the Lord tell, and I go by the way of the grave. But on that great resurrection morning, praise God, death, <laughs> hallelujah, has no hold. Praise God. Oh, my. And then there's this voice of the good shepherd who invites his redeemed people to rally around him every time he's ready to move and to move out and to move forward. He's rallied us now. Did you know we have heard the voice of the Lord? And this is why we're involved in a spiritual awakening. We have rallied to this voice. In John chapter 10, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. We're not going to perish. Praise the Lord. This is the voice of the good shepherd. He said, my sheep listen to my voice. That's a confident word. He has confidence in every one of us tonight because here he says, my sheep do what? They listen to my voice. He knows, he knows that we're listening to his voice. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. This is the voice of the minister of heaven's communications. In Matthew chapter 17, this is my son 
whom I love. And one translation says, listen to him. <laughs> listen to him. Oh, are you listening to him? He says, my sheep know my voice and they're listening. Praise God. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that we're listening to him? You know, I think so, so many times as leaders, I'll say as leaders in, of churches in the past, I've assumed that some of my people didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> Just saying, I assumed that some of them weren't as sensitive as I thought they should be. But when it was all said and done, I found out they, that they were a lot further along than I was perceiving. We don't know each other's circumstances. And as a leader in this ministry, along with our senior pastor, I don't know your depth. I don't know how close you are to God. I don't know how well of a listener you are. I don't know how sensitive you are. But the circumstances you've come through, from your salvation until your maturing to this very hour, I do not know the totality and the commitment of your relationship with the Lord. But I do know this, that the depth of God's Spirit in this time of spiritual awakening proves to me that there's a depth in this room and in this ministry that's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Because we've begun to hear the roaring voice of Jesus. Matthew 17. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Listen to him. I know maybe none of you ever was disciplined by your parents. But there's been a few times in my early days that my dad would say to me, listen to me, son. Mom would say, listen to me, Phil, or I'm going to tell your dad. So I would listen. Listen to him. The Father's mandate is clear. We must never stop heeding his voice, his dictates of Scripture. In Revelation 19 from the message it says, His eyes are a blaze of fire. On his head many crowns. He is addressed as Word of God. The armies of heaven follow him. A sharp sword comes out of his mouth so he can subdue the nations, then rule them with a rod of iron. Our future is bright. Victory is ours. Let us tonight have eyes to the ground and ears to the heavens. How come we can't be so positive? 
Why is it that negativity spreads like fire? But when you're positive all the time, it's one barrier after another. The gospel of the kingdom is the good news. The church is going forward. We're growing. The voice that planted John face down on the Isle of Patmos. That same voice is the voice that we're hearing today. He is near us. He is close to us. And I'll be transparent here. My reverence for the Lord. I've always been reverent of the Lord. My, but my reverence for the Lord has now been cu coupled with awe. I've never, I, I don't know how to say it. I reverence the Lord, but there's something new. There's something fresh. I, I awe. I'm in awe of him. I've said this before, but I, I never in most of the year, until maybe 10 years ago, I, I would have never considered myself a friend of God. I, I couldn't see myself. I couldn't position myself. I mean to be a friend of God. That awes me. I, it's, it's just about more than I can take. Have you heard the voice that roars recently? I have, and I know many of you have. That's what Hebrews chapter 12 urges you and I to do today and every day. Hebrews 12 this is a paraphrase, but you have come to Jesus. Be sure you don't say no to the one who speaks. People did not escape when they said no to the one who warned them on earth. At that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, once more I will shake the earth. I will also shake the heavens. Then what can be shaken will remain. We are receiving a kingdom that can't be shaken. So let us be thankful. Praise God. Hallelujah. The kingdom that we are of cannot be shaken. What security we have. Praise God. Why can't we get out here every day and win this war and live in victory and overcome everything the enemy comes at us with? And praise God, rise up with a shout of victory. We are more than conquerors through Christ who strengtheneth us. This is our day. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. 
Amen and amen and amen. I close with this tonight. As the church, we must never cease to tremble at Jesus' voice because, hear this, he has a lot to say. Amen? He has a lot to say. And he has every right to say it. And whenever he speaks, whenever he roars, nothing ever stays the same. Never stays the same. Including inside your heart and mine, his voice is now. I want to tell you, and I close with this. I may have shared a little bit of this the other night with you, but I had a, a little hen. I got some chickens that just run loose in my barn. I just let them do, go wherever they want to go. Sister Russell once in a while says, you ought to get rid of them. They're just running around. I like them running around. But back in February, this one hen stole away and she laid a nest of eggs and she began to set. It was too cold for her to be set. But something got in there and she hatched out one little chick and then something got in there and killed her. I just found a bunch of feathers. And that little chick was only four, five, six days old. And that little chick is now about a month old, and he's surviving. I don't know how he survived, but I go out there and feed and hear that little chick is running, and I've been throwing out some feed, some corn, and it, it, it runs and starts just a little bitty thing. And I said, how is this thing surviving? But it's surviving. And it's getting feathers now. After 2,000 years, all kinds of things has happened to the church. And there's been all kinds of persecutions and onslaughts, divisions, all kinds of things has happened. But we are like that little chick. In spite of it all, we're getting our feathers. And they shall mount up with wings as an eagle. In spite of all of the things that are happening, we're getting ready to soar. We're getting ready to leave eventually. But until then, we're going to walk amongst the world. Be in this world, but not of this world. We're going to be salt and light. We're going to be the voice that gives the gospel. Praise God. And the closer we get to his return, the louder his voice will be and the more active we will become. And we will be that powerful force in this last day. Praise God that ushers in the coming return of Jesus Christ. But we will leave here not defeated, but in victory and power and in his glory. And I praise God for what is happening and about to happen. Shall we stand together tonight? Father, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. How beautiful it is for us to come in a spirit of expectancy to midweek recharge, to learn 
how to be strategic as a ministry, strategic as an individual. And to hear the roaring voice of our Lord and Savior. A voice that changes us. That imparts to us. Help us. Help us, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God. 